Good morning. Good morning. Our service begins with the opening acclamation. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Our opening hymn, when all the world to life is waking. January Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Kristen will be reading the first reading and leading us in the psalm. If you would unmute yourself. And she has. A reading from Numbers chapter 21, beginning at the fourth verse. From Mount Hor, they set out by way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many of the people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and Everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent was bit by bit any man, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now the psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endures forever. forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them from out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. And saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. And the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Bruce will read the second lesson. A reading from the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians. And you, you made he and you and he made alive when you were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Among these, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of body and mind. And so we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we are dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace we have been saved, and raised us up with him and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Jesus, in Christ Jesus that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our sequence hymn.
The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to John. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light. And because their deeds were evil, for everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. The Gospel of the Lord. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we come to a Sunday which has many names in the English-speaking world, in the Anglican communion, the churches which have their origins in the British Isles. It is called Mid-Lent Sunday, Mothering Sunday, and in fact, in many Commonwealth countries, today is Mother's Day, and if you are from a Commonwealth country or in a Commonwealth country, or today is Mother's Day for you or your mother, happy Mother's Day. It is Rose Sunday, a day when the vestments in some churches lighten from deep violet to rose as a sign of the lightening of the Lenten discipline for a Sunday before the descent into the Passion Tide, the ever more severe Lenten observance on the way to and through Jerusalem on the way to and through the cross on which the Son of Man was lifted up. In today's reading from Numbers, a book of the Bible from which we rarely hear because it is <clears throat> boring, it is turgid, it is tedious to read, as my July book one year, every year in July, I take a book of the Bible that I've never really read through and I read it through. One year I took numbers. Let me tell you, there are a lot of cubits in there. There are a lot of numbers in there. Uh, it is, as you may know, the Old Testament, the, uh, well, the Pentateuch, the uh, first five books of the Bible 
scholars believe were written by four authors, not necessarily by the hand of Moses himself, um, but by five scholars J, who referred to as J, E, D, and P. And the one who wrote numbers really liked facts. This was a quant guy, a statistician. Uh, and yet today's passage is one of the most meaningful and potent passages in that book. And thank you, Kristen, for reading it powerfully and potently. The people of Israel, in their progress from Egypt back to their home, turned against God any number of times and returned to God. In this passage, as all scripture is, a reflection of the experience of the people of God, they experience God as vengeful, as punishing them by sending fiery serpents to kill them. And we see how the author of Numbers expresses God's mercy through the very symbol, the very creature that had previously shown his wrath, the serpent. And he had Moses fashion a fiery serpent, one fired in bronze and put it on his staff. This comes down to us, as you all know, in the medical symbol, which we see in front of doctor's offices on the side of ambulances, the caduceus is the symbol of healing and life-giving action. And so that which was a symbol of death and an instrument of death became a symbol of and vehicle of life. And so the cross stands before us and we set our faces toward it in Jerusalem. And so if we've been thoughtful in this time of Lent, this time of reading and prayer, of fasting and self-denial of reflection, and even if that starts today for you or for me, the very thing which has kept us from God can bring us closer. The very thing which was causing us spiritual distress can be the means for our coming back to spiritual health. If we offer it up to God, even as our Lord was offered up on the cross, even as that serpent was put on Moses' staff, may we think of the offering up of our sins, not just as a metaphor for our new life, but as a means of it. By taking what is painful, what is keeping us away from being who we are, and offering it to God, that God might turn it to his use. Because we can never truly throw away something that is in us, but we can turn it toward God's purpose. May we spend these last two solid weeks of Lent focusing on what is taking us from God's presence and offering it to God and asking that he might turn it to his, through his mysterious ways, to his power and through his power to our redemption and through Christ's grace to our salvation. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We continue in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Remembering especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Ian and Laura, our own bishops, me, God's unworthy servant in this place, and all bishops and other ministers. With the wider Anglican communion, we pray for the province of Chile, the Most Reverend Tito Zavala, their primate. With the rest of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, we pray for Grace in St. Peter's Hamden, Christ Church Cathedral Hartford, Good Shepherd Hartford, for the bishops, diocesan staff, for parish employees and their families. In our own parish, we pray for the Call to Action Committee, for Dana Flath, our accountant, for Michelle, Bruce, Clay, Marissa, and Nicole Graham, for Stella and Robert Manorino, for Anthony Pulowski and Antoinette Prudhomme, for Ava and Alana, Antonia Schwartz and Michael Storm, for Andrew, Chloe, and Catherine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations, particularly Joseph, our president, Ned, our governor, Fred, our first selectman, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal our nation and communities torn by racial and political strife and instances of man's inhumanity to man. Lord, in your mercy, for all suffering with COVID-19, physically, emotionally, or financially, and for those who care for those who are in pain. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those we now name either silently or aloud. Pray for my mother, Diana, as she enters Seabury Center in Bloomfield tomorrow, that her transition might be exactly what she needs it to be, that her fears might be turned to peace. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially those we now name, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and what we have asked faithfully. Grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Beloved, greet one another in the name of the Lord. I uh, switch us briefly from speaker to gallery view so we can just note who's with us here. It's wonderful to see all of you. Uh, others have been and have gone and it's, uh, it's, it's like the church in the marketplace, people come and go. And so it's really nice to see all of you. I noted in my note to you yesterday, it's a good sign in Greenwich, we've seen steady declines in the infection rates of 20 and 20, and then most recently 10 and 10% um, week by week and 20% this past week. Um, that's good. And if this keeps up, we will reach our goal of being able for those who are comfortable to worship in person. And we will continue to refine and improve our uh, video capabilities in the weeks and months to come to include those who are far away and those who feel a need to keep distance as we continue to move through and out of this pandemic. Praise God and God willing and helping. May we walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. And immediately following the service, if you'd like to stay around on Zoom for a little while, we'll have some time for fellowship. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. 
by his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. So Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, preserve your bodies and souls unto everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, 
you have graciously accepted us as living members of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. <laughs>